you know, whenever Edomites start talking about what's going on with Israelites, you Israelite brothers and sisters, you better look around and start patting your pockets. Make sure it hadn't been picked. Shalom, Israel Judah, your brother DFG, Elder DFG. Hey guys, I just want to take a couple of moments and share some thoughts around um, some information that just came out um, on yesterday. And I'm kind of cut right to the chase and I'm going to give you some scripture to back up, you know, why your elder has taken this position or at least felt compelled to share some information with you and scripture around, around, along around this situation or position. I was watching Redacted and uh, uh, what's his name? Morris Clayton at Natalie Clayton. If you guys know that, many of you I'm sure are familiar with the program. It's these Both of these guys used to be a, uh, journalists or part of the media organization with MSNBC uh, some years back. But anyway, the long and the short of it is that uh, on their program yesterday, they were showing Chicago uh, in regards to um, what they said, uh, civil wars coming, you know, with, with black people. And it specifically emphasizes, you know, the fact that, you know, black, 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 black. And of course, they use one of their reporters, you know, who's not black, to go into Chicago and they interview uh, this guy who's supposedly be, you know, an activist and asking him questions about what's going on, you know, in Chicago. And of course, he tells them about, you know, the conditions there, the poverty there and how that, you know, when he was in prison and, you know, when they come back from prison, talking about the, <laughs> the Israelite guys, I shit you not, when they come back from prison and, you know, when they find it's their, their, their city and, and things, conditions, you know, um, eroding and how that, you know, the Obama administration, Trump administration, two, you know, differences, you know, uh, you know, without a distinction, for lack of a better expression. But he just goes on for, for, you know, I don't know, a minute or so talking about, you know, how that, you know, the, the governmental systems has caused these problems. And of course, then they go on to talk about, well, it's going to be a war. It's going to be a, you know, a, a war. You know, not, 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 you know, it's not white against black, but the blacks against the illegals or the immigrants that are in, you know, Chicago. And as I listened to them, I have to be honest with you, I got aggravated and more aggravated, you know, because really the emphasis somehow or another, again, has made us the talk, you know, like we were the target for the jab and the talk for everything else negative about this country. Here it is. We're the target again. Now, there's a reason for it. So don't. don't Jump ahead of your, you know, your elder. But I don't know how you could be an Israelite man or, 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 or a male or a female and, and be comfortable, you know, with, with, you know, heathens, you know, addressing your concerns. And a part of them addressing your concerns is talking about your men when they came back from prison as though they were coming back from war or coming back from some noble, you know what I'm saying, uh, excitement, some, some noble, you know, uh, accomplishment. And they go on and on. I, there's a, I'm going to drop the, 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 the link in the description box so you can, you can listen to it and tell me how you feel about that in the comments. But the, but the long and the short of it is that, you know, now they're saying that, you know, you know, we the black people are going to start a war in Chicago against the immigrants. Like we have something to do with the immigrants coming in Chicago and like somehow it's in our interest to start a war with, if you want to call them illegal aliens, I don't know how they're illegal when this government allowed them to come. So how do they, how they're illegal? Illegal is when they come, you know, under means where they manipulated and figured out a way to cross the border. Not when the border patrol is looking over there doing their hand like that. But that's the way it's being projected. You know, and you know how Israel is. We, you know, we are so distracted watching what's going on with Sean Combs. We don't, we're not even thinking about, you know, any other type of um, plot that's being cultivated right under our nose. Because that's what they do. They look over here. Nothing to see over here, but everything over here is going to destroy your ass. Yeah, I'm a little uptight about it. 
And so now they're projecting that somehow or another the immigration problem is our problem. It's an Israelite problem. And stroking the uninformed among us to initiate or provoke a fight with I think the number now is running in somewhere in almost 30 million immigrants have come over these borders in the last three to four years. 30 million. Now, if you look at the total Israelite population in, in America, that number sits around 30 million. That's talking about women, babies, the sick among us, the elderly among us. The bugged out, drugged out among us, the alcoholics among us, the whores among us, the fools, F-O-O-L-S among us. There ain't going to be much of a fight if that fight gets started. I mean, if you go back and you remember, some months back, if you're following this channel, the same Clayton Morrison guy. Now, these people have two, over 2 million subscribers and there are hundreds of thousands who watch their their, their particular program every day. So it's an issue. They're socially engineering, you know, the Edomites on how to see us as Israelites because they're going to say black and how dangerous we are because, you know, we're just coming out of these prisons as though, you know, this has nothing to do with their wicked behavior. Can y'all see that? I was told to hold this a little farther back so you can see it. But it just says, worse than slavery. Uh, the ordeal of the Jim Crow system is talking about, you know, uh, the, the, the school to prison pipeline. Or really it's talking about the addendum that was made to the 13th Amendment when supposedly slavery was, was, was abolished in America. When they passed that, the so-called free us, and then they snuck in there cleverly except with the admittance of a except of a per a crime being committed, then otherwise you're not free. We're just going to take you from the plantation. I mean, from the yeah the plantation to the penitentiary. You can read that in your in your thirteen in their thirteen amendment, which applies to us. The thirteen amendment was written for us, not for them. You, know, you got to keep that in mind. A lot of times we look at it, well, it's just the 13th Amendment. They're just saying, no, it was their, they were saying they were abolishing slavery. Get this, sisters and brothers. Here it is. They're saying they're abolishing slavery, but they put an asterisk there. They say, except y'all commit any crimes, then we throw y'all back into slavery. Oh, and by the way, we're going to come up with some new laws. We're going to put some new laws on the book to make sure y'all commit these crimes. Because we need that free labor. And nobody can use a whore. <laughs> H-O-E, not W-H-O-R-E. Better than them, you know, them slaves. And here we are, a hundred plus years later, Still talking about how we coming out the prison. Still coming off the plantation. And you got these Edomite heathens over there projecting this upon the rest of America and the rest of the world because it was a sister of mine from the United Kingdom who brought it to my attention. I had seen it yesterday, but she brought it to my attention again this morning. It's early, right? Now. It's not even 7 o'clock in the morning, so I'm already stimulated, <laughs> motivated, and definitely feel like I want to do a little educating, hallelujah, to my people. And what am, I, what am I saying? The same people who said this, some months back on that same program said, this is what they said. Now, now, brothers and sisters, go back. You, you don't have to find it. Or you can go back to their program. They said it. They said, America has a plot or strategy. And the government system was going to do this. Exactly what they said. They're going to use the black people to kill the white people. And then they were going to use the immigrants to kill the black people. And make America, you know, a new country full of immigrants. Now, if you know anything about America, 
I think the, the, the numbers are something like for every one citizen, and the majority of citizens in America are white, they have 30 guns. <laughs> 30 to 1. 30 guns to every one white person. Now, I want you to ask yourself another question because I know you're smart enough to do this, Matt. How long would this war go on between us and white folk? So-called. How long do you think? Two days? A week? I want you to think big picture now. Don't get caught up in just guns and bullets. I want you to think about cutting off your power. I'm talking about cutting off your water supply. Cutting off your food supply. Blocking all your access and in ingress in and out of the cities. I want you to think about bombs and planes. I want you to think about drones. And then I want you to think about what they said. Starting to get the picture. Do you kind of sense that maybe we're being set up for something here? That we're absolutely not prepared for? And they're using places like Chicago, major city in America, I think the second or third largest city in America, to project this somehow or another. A civil war is about to start between the black and the immigrants. So you black men, y'all start attacking these immigrants. You immigrants, you illegals, the blacks are going to come and get you. So you better get ready to start attacking them back. And then sit back with their little, you know, iced tea and watch the bullets fly and the people die. All the while, they're just sitting over there winking at each other. I told you they were gullible. I told you they were ignorant. After all, you know, they, you know they're convicts. Who cares about them killing each other? Well, I care about it. I care about it enough to talk about it. I care enough about it to tell my brothers and sisters, you know, we have got to refocus. We have got to turn off all the BS and get serious about being serious about whether or not you still want to be around here three to five years from now. Many of our people are already going to be battling the fact of taking the jab. Let's just call it what it is. You're already, many of you are already battling, battling with it, and it's only going to escalate and get a whole lot worse because, unfortunately, disproportionately, more of us took it than they took it because they were made us the target. Warp speed. Remember the Donald Trump? We're going to warp speed. And, of course, they use the clergy. They use the government. They use, you know, the, the so-called... Um, community activists, the people who cared, <laughs> medical field, you know, educational field to push it. And so many of our people, because we didn't understand who they are, <laughs> went along with it. And what I mean by that, not realizing that these people have a perpetual hatred towards our people. That no matter how much you thought you could love them, <laughs> they are incapable of loving you back. And of course, they use the church to push that lie. Love everybody. Love your enemies. Do good to those who despitefully use you. Slaves, obey your master, which is right in the law. Oh, you know, you know, you know, obey those who have rulership over you. We don't give a damn how many, you know, genocidal maniacs that they can put in position to attack you, but you need to, you know, you need to obey them because that's what, that's what God would want you to do. And they use ignorant Israelites, male and female, to push that foolishness out of that New Testament sorceress book. Yeah, I said it again. And we like, you know, lap dogs just lapped it up and projected it out. And some of our people still over there talking about I'm a Christian. Oh, I still believe in Jesus. I still believe in the Messiah. I still believe in the Lamb that died for my sins, the, the sins. Well, I ain't a Christian, but I do believe in Yahushua, uh, 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 Hawashai. You might well, you know, believe, you know what I'm saying, in Casper the Friendly Ghost, because that's about as much salvation you're going to get out of him. You can't tell he hadn't done anything for 400 years. But again, I digress. Not, that ain't, that's, that's not my problem anymore. Maybe some of your problem, but it ain't mine. 
I know better. And how's the old saying go? When you know better, you do better. Well, I don't always apply to Israel, of course. The Psalms 83 made it clear. David said what? He said they would, what? They would be confederate against us. Talking about all the nations. And just sit back again. Set us up for the kill. Fatten us up for the kill. And then like you said, then when everything is done, they say, well, it ain't had nothing to do with that. It was black on black. <laughs> that was the color folk. That was the minorities on minorities. Yet they were stroking it, that, that war all the time, like what you heard or what you'll see if you watch this link. Stroking the fire, provoking the fire, and at the same time, what did the book say? They do evil, but hold themselves not guilty. But it's going to have to be a voice, brothers and sisters, that's going to cry out in this wilderness. And when I mean, I ain't talking about trees. I'm not talking about mountains. I'm talking about, you know, when you're in the wilderness, you can get lost out there. Well, somebody's going to have to say something if you're going to, you know, recognize how to get back to a place of safety. How to, better said, how to get back to a place of strength. And like Isaiah said, if nobody else don't want to go, here I am, Yah, send me, I'll go. So here I am. But again, you know, you look at a city like Chicago. You look at the crime rate in Chicago. I'm not talking about now, I'm talking about for the last probably, who knows how long, but at least the last three decades. In terms of actual bodies on the ground. <laughs> what I mean by the I said, didn't say foot feet on the ground, I said bodies on the ground. Body bags. Chicago, I tell you, numerically would lead the, lead this country. There's no city that would have that body count. When it comes down to Israelites, so called black people. At least that's how they identify us here. Judah. Some of the other tribes mixed in. But now all of a sudden they care about Chicago again. All of a sudden now they care about the blacks in Chicago again, using their word. And they want to just stroke with everybody, but they want to make sure everybody knows they're kind of Edomites, the Hamites, the Canaanites, they're all confederate, they're all together. So brothers and sisters, like I said it before, it's not about melanation, it's about education. All Israel is not Israel. Now all of a sudden they got this concern for us and telling us to get ready because it's going to be a civil war between y'all and them. And when your men come back from prison, tell them to come back ready to start, you know, fighting. They always clean up the mess they made. The government I'm talking about. This is their mess, not our mess. The immigration issue is not our concern, Yasharel. Israel, that's their mess. But so many of us, you know, we want to be, you know, we want to be counted in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, I want to be in that number because I supposed to be the saint walking in just like a coon. I said it. No damn body saint. A man of Yahuwah. I'm a man that the book tells me clearly. Psalm 144. The strength of Yahuwah teaches my hands to war, my fingers to fight. That's a spiritual or physical. Whatever is required. Fight. So brothers and sisters, what I am saying is that regardless of what redacted said or whoever says, not regardless, but I just want you to understand, brothers and sisters, there are many of them, those uh, that, that are overt, in other words, you can see them, and covert in behind the scenes that you can't see. But they're all working together in a confederacy. And believe it or not, this is in our book. And this is why I emphasize to my brothers and sisters, you need to study history. 
Not their story, your story. History. Again, not their story, our story. Because our story looks like this. You know where I'm going? Like this. Especially here in the so-called Americas. Our stories look like this. Especially here in the Americas. Our story looks like this. Like Wall Street. Especially here in America. Our story looks like this. The nick the neck the nectable the electable negro here in America about raping men, by the way. And I could go on and on, okay? I can go on and on with that, I'll, that's enough. But I, I've got more. But all that stuff that I just showed you, brothers and sisters, can be found right here. The book of Joel says what? Chapter, what, three, verse five, I believe it says, they sold a boy for a whore. <laughs> Delectable Negro, what this is about white slave ship masters and others who were, had our people, you know, trans, in the transatlantic slave, how they were raping black men, making them their little house boys, house girls. And, a, you know, and a, you know, we said a woman for a bottle of wine. Well, we, we, we don't have to take a lot of imagination to figure that story out. And you just heard me again mention about Psalms 83. All the nations. You go read Psalms 83, 1 to 5. Again. It said all the nations, Confederate. Last night in our, you know, Tanakh study group, we talked about that. And, we, and they listed out those nations. They're sitting right there. They just give them a new name. They hid the, the original name. At least they hid the names, how they, you would identify them today. Called covert. They want to hide so they don't, you don't know exactly who they're talking about in Psalms 83. But we looked at it. And I can tell you the nation they talked about was Europe, Saudi Arabia, Asia. Africa, even went to the Japanese or, or what you call the Philippines, all those islands out there in the Pacific Ocean area. They talk about the Akinasi, y'all know those, those are the fake ones and that's occupying, you know, you know, the, the, you know, the area of Palestine and beyond right now, Netanyahu group. Again, Africans, Asians, that's the East Asians, you know, the melanated ones, India, Pakistan, them, all of them. South America too. Those who are not, those except for the few out over there, oh, not few, but except for our brothers and sisters that are in South America, because we're there too. I'm talking about Israel. But all of them working together. That's why wherever we go, we in the ghetto. Wherever we go, we're the target or we're the face of crime. We're the face of poverty. We're, we're the face of wickedness. We're the face of whoredom, prostitution, hoodlums. The so-called civilized. And unfortunately, there's some legitimacy to it. <laughs> because we don't know who we are. And when you don't know who you are, then you who people say you are. And that's not going to change until you educate yourself. Until you humble yourself, Yasharel. Walk away from all of your high-mindedness, your haughtiness, your arrogance, your boastfulness, your pride. Nobody can tell you nothing. Only God can judge you mentality. Until you walk away from that, you're going to continue to get destroyed. You and your children. There's no future for you in this. They don't have a plan for your future. Let's go over there real quick. Psalms 83. This is just a warning. That was written in our book, our history. Look what it says here. Psalms 83. It says, keep not your silence. And this is, this is what it says. This it says, keep not your silence, Yahuwah. Hold not your peace and be not still. In other words, hear our prayer. Respond to our, our, our request of you, Yahuwah. For lo, your enemies 
the enemies of Yahuwah. See, when, when Yah said we were his chosen, in Isaiah 43, when he reminded us that the holy ones of, you know, of, of, of Yahuwah, you are mine. I'm your savior. I'm your redeemer. Well, they despise me in hatred for the true creator has always projected itself upon those that the true creator identified as his own. But those who the true creator has identified as his own, as it is written in the book, have shown time and time and time again, they prefer the way of a heathen over the ways of Yahuwah, our sovereign, Elohim. So therefore, when it speaks here in verse 2, Lo, your enemies make a tumult or create confusion, and that they have they hate you, and those that hate you have lifted up their head. Now, in other words, they're on the wall. They're on the, they're on the wall path. This has been going on for hundreds and thousands of years, but this is nothing new under the sun. It's just a modern day event of something that was that's always been going on. You're just seeing it in our time, just like our forefathers, if they were in Greenwood, Oklahoma, that so-called black Wall Street, they would have seen the same hatred in their time. And had they been in, uh, in cities in the northern part in the 1700s, they would have seen the, the massive assaults, the Constriction Act in 1865 up in Chicago and New York, how they were slaughtering our people because they were mad because Lincoln started telling the Edomites he needed, he started drafting them to go down and fight in his war, his preserved the Union War. So what did they do? They didn't take it out on Lincoln. They didn't take it out upon each other in the north. They took it out on us up in the north. But many of our people don't know anything about that. So guess what? I'm here to bring it out. You can look it up. So this has been going on. This, this perpetual hatred for Yahuwah. And since they can't touch him, and we reject him, now they're able to touch us. And we talked about it last night. But we also talked about, you know, the strength of Yasharel in Yah's truth. And that we're more than capable of fighting back. And although we are a minority, it did not matter. One put a thousand to fight, two ten thousand. In this case, 112 of us ran off hundreds of thousands of them. Those we didn't send to an early grave. In a battle. We read it in Joshua 37. That's the kind of stuff happening in our Tanakh studies. We ain't over there talking about what Paul said, you know, to Silas. We went over there glorifying Timothy and his mother and how good she was. We went over there telling our sisters, shut up and, you know, and go home if you and ask your husband if you have a question. We went over there celebrating someone who called women dogs. Not good to give the bread of the children to the dogs. Remember when the woman act their so-called uh, Messiah? <laughs> and then she would say, well, 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 master, even the dogs eat the crumb from the master's table. So all you sisters out there who love your Jesus, just remember, he thought you were a dog. Just saying. Just saying. First three, they said, look at it, said, they have taken crafty counsel against your people, meaning us. We're his people. You're my chosen. Isaiah 43, right? They have taken crafty counsel against your people and have consulted against your hidden ones. The ones that Yah said he was going to protect. What they're doing is conspiring against those of us who are protected by Yah because we are his. And have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Yashrael be no more remembered. You know what that means? No more remembered? Mean no more of us. And then it goes on to describe these different, he says what, verse 5, for they have consulted together with, with one consent 
You heard them, you know, like I say, dog whistling. What redacted yesterday? They're all in this together to eliminate us by, by, by provoking us to get involved in something that has absolutely nothing to do with us. But they're going to let us do their wicked fighting for them and then come back and clean up the, the whatever's left over, the mess. They're not going to let their sons and daughters, you know, die in America. They're going to let our children do it. And because we don't understand how demonic these, 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 these devils are, we're just sitting right there lapping it up. Well, it's all about love. It's all the same. Nobody, you know, you are racist, DFG. You are effing lie. Call me a lot of things, but that wouldn't be appropriate identification for this brother. I got a 40 year history that can back me up on that statement. This has everything to do with the truth. Because Yah said it, not because I believe it. I believe it because Yah said it, but not because I'm creating it. And then it goes out to list these nations that I just listed to you a moment ago. If you email me, I'll send you these names and the and the nation that they identified by today. Just letting you know. I ain't nothing to hide over here. But it clearly tells us what's going to go on. And again, I want you to go back to verse eight, Psalms eighty-three, verse three again. They have taken they have taken crafty means being clever counsel against your people and conspired against your hidden ones. Now, think about that. Now, watch. let's go over to Isaiah 43, precepts. I know you got your hand in, so y'all know the drill around here. Crafty counsel against your people. Who is this people? Isaiah 43. But now thus says Yahuwah that created you, O Jacob, and who that found you, O Yasharel, those who they don't want to be alive anymore. Fear not, I have redeemed you. So he's our redeemer, and I have called you by your name, you are mine, talking about Yasharel. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the fire, you know, kindle upon you. For I am Yahuwah, the Holy One of Yasharel, your Savior. They don't like that shit. They know our history better than we know it. So they're conspiring and taking crafty counsel against us. And they're using the entertainers or anybody else they can to throw shade on us, the hidden ones of Yasharel. The ones they didn't want to find out who we were. The so-called lost tribes. The hidden ones. But now Yah is bringing it out. He's using men and women like myself to bring it out. And the more of our people who wake up, the stronger we will be. Again, one can put a thousand to flight, two ten thousand to flight. What you gonna do? Talking to you, Yasharel. Righteous stranger. By the way, what you gonna do? And we don't need you over here telling us who we are. Go over there and tell your folk who we are. If you want to help, you go address it with your kind. You go tell them how shameful you are of them. Tell them. That we can't hear you. Oh, you, we hear you over there talking to us. They ain't helping us. Go talk to them. And bring your mic with you. We want to hear what you said publicly. When you go to your school board meeting, you talk to them. When you go to your elk meeting, you go talk to them. Your Zions, your uh, Lions Club, you go talk to them. Please bring a mic. Then we'll be convinced that you're a righteous stranger. Otherwise, you know, for us, your declaration that you know who we are is you just pissing in the wind, calling it rain. That was saying, put your money where your mouth is. Put your behavior where your conviction is. Or not, that's up to you. But we're not going to hold our breath on that one. If you don't hold your breath on it. The only righteous when they talking to you, when they go by their car, they ain't got nothing to say about you. Trust them on that. You can believe that. Or they'll tell you about how, like, like Morris, Clay Morris, oh, you know, it's going to be a civil war between the blacks and the immigrants. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Let's go to the Torah. But I told you, all this stuff that your brother just said, your elder just said, it's in our book. Nothing new under the sun. And not what Solomon told us in Ecclesiastes. Nothing new under the sun. Now, it's going to take a minute or two, so, but I'm going to read verse by verse by verse, okay? Some of you read it before, some of you know about it, but haven't read it. So I'm going to read it for you today. I'm going to do the heavy lifting, okay? I'm going to be Moses. You just hold my arms up. Can you do that for your brother? Share this video, thumb this video up. If you're equally concerned about your people as I am. Okay? Would you, will you help me? Not think about helping me. Say you helping me, but actually put your money where your mouth is. But I mean action. <laughs> Resources help too, but I'm not talking about physical currency, I'm talking about your behavior, your support, your cooperation, your sharing of this information. Let's go on, let's start reading here. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse 20, sorry, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if you will not listen to the voice of Yahuwah, Yasharel, talking to us, this is our book, and Yahuwah had written it to talk to us, not to the heathens. Why they told you it was done away with. Told you they had a new savior for you. A savior that told you just to be a good boy, be a good girl. In other words, slaves obey your masters. Obey those who have ruled over you, even though they're Jim Crow. Even though they had segregation laws. Pig laws. Black codes. Sundown uh, laws. Depriving you of access to wealth, redlining, redistricting, depriving you of the power of the vote. That you can bring an economic change to having representatives who look like you. All of those things. But again, I digress on that. But I don't digress in terms of minimize it. I'm, I'm going to move on. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass if you will not hearken to the voice of Yahuwah to guard all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Now that's important. The Most High is telling us there will be consequences against us if we reject him. There will, he used the word curses. Verse 16. He said, curse will you be in your cities, Israel. Curse shall you be in your place of work. That's the field. Curse shall you be in the basket in your store. That's your resources. Curse shall you be in the fruit of your body. That's your health. Curse that you shall be in the fruit of your land. It's wherever you're living on this flat earth. And the increase of your kind, the increase of your flock, your sheep. In other words, you'll be putting money in bags with holes in it because whatever you get, they're going to find a clever way to take it. They'll move out of the cities and give you their own home, charge you triple for that, and then let them run down and, and then, you know, become slum laws while you live in rat-infested, roach-infested ghettos. And then, uh, then accuse you of not lifting yourself up by your bootstraps, accusing you of being beggars as they go through their gentrification process. Verse 19, curse shall you be when you come in, Curse shall you be when you go out. That means you can go down the street, driving up the highway, wherever you are, and you're always in fear of something possibly happening to you. 20. And you who shall send upon you curses, vexation, that's mind, you know, depression, anxiety, confusion, bitterness, hatred, self-centeredness. Vexation, always vexed. Oh, just constantly, you know, people always complaining that them, them folk, he's talking about them, never happy. Only time they're happy is, you know, <laughs> when they're having their way. Vexation. And you who shall send curse upon you, vexation, and the rebuke and all that you set your hand Unto for you to do until you be destroyed and until you perish quickly and we die quicker than anybody else. Y'all know that? Israelites in, in America, for, for, and I don't know the stats around the world, but in America, we die the youngest. 
on average. Our women die younger than all the other nations here and our men die younger than all the other nations here. I'm talking about those who live to a, 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 a full age in early 60s. We're not going to talk about, you know what I'm saying, the other parts that cause early death to us. That's set up by them, of course. As they're trying to set up now, I want to tell them we're going to get into a war with the, uh, with the illegals. Yeah, right. I'm not. <laughs> Verse 21. I'm sorry, verse 20. And destroyed until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your own doing because you have forsaken me. Now, see, that's got to be called out. He's saying all these things are happening to us because we are forsaken. You know, we want to jump into it. It's racism and this is ism and that ism and that ism. And it is those things, but it really comes right back down to our rejection of Yahuwah. In our study last night, Joshua 37, you would have seen the power of Yahshua. I said it earlier. Judah in particular. Us and how we were able to destroy enemies because we had a relationship with Yahuwah. We prayed to Yahuwah. Our forefather Jacob was praying to Yahuwah before we went to war. He even said, Yeah, if we got to lose, then you take them. Don't let the enemies take them. That's how connected we were with Yahuwah. That's my role right now. That's my passion right now to reconnect my brothers and sisters back to our sovereign Yahuwah, the one sovereign one, no other. So we get our strength back. Let's go on. Verse 21. And Yahuwah shall make the pestilence cleave unto you. That's diseases. Look how sick we are. I'm talking about per capita. Until, you have, until, until he has consumed you from off the land, wherever you go to possess it. So you can't run. He said, like Bob Marshall, you can run, you can run, but Yah said, you ain't going to be able to hide from me, Yahshua. If you reject me, you ain't going to be able to hide from me because I'm going to make sure everywhere you go, it's going to be like a harness nest for you. Verse 22, Yahuwah shall smite you with consumption and with fever. Again, <laughs> thank COVID if you want to. And with information and with extreme burnings and with the sword. Remember our daughters in Zion and Isaiah chapter 3 said they would have an extreme burning or uh, itch down there. If you haven't read Isaiah chapter 3, that's the last day. Go read out. That's the last day warning. That's the end time warning because Isaiah chapter 2 verses 2, I think, tells you in the last days. This burning, this itch, this baldness, this, you know, fear of our own children, fearing of our own brothers and sisters, hating one another. All these things that we see in today. But we don't know that because we think it has something to do with just attitudes. Never realizing these are curses. This is your word showing itself to be true. But how would you know that if they tell you don't read the book? And how would you understand the book without somebody assisting you, teaching, educating you, like myself and, and others? But I don't know about others. I'm only going to talk about what I want to do and what I am doing and have been doing. Constantly inviting you to join us. Some you have, most of you, I guess you're just busy. You might be a little bit too busy, let me tell it. Verse 22, and Yahuwah shall smite you with consumption and with fever, inflammation, that's the swelling of your body. High blood pressure, you know, your fingers swole, your feet swole, your ankles swole. Inflammation. And with extreme burning and with the sword, that's Black on black or Israelite on black, Israelite crying and the heathen shooting us down, asking questions later. Shoot first, ask questions later. I thought he had a gun. That's a cell phone, but I thought it was a gun. Y'all know how that, how that plays out every single time. And they shall pursue you until you perish. You know what they said? They're not going to stop. Pray all you want. If you don't obey Yah's law, statutes, and commandments, and you serving any other entities, the Black Rock one too, Islam, then you're going to keep on getting what you've been getting is what he's telling us. Nothing will change. You can hope all you want. You can pray to the stone. You can pray to the wood. You can pray to the cross. But the one thing you're going to notice ain't nothing changing. Because Yah said it wouldn't. 
And this word is true. Every word of Yahuwah is pure. Go read that in the book of Proverbs. Solomon said, Proverbs 35 and 6. He said, you can't add to it and you can't take away from it, except you be a fool or a liar. So if, if we're rejecting him for other saviors and redeemers, he said, none of this is going to change. I don't care what the Dows and the, the Myers and whoever say the carrying, it doesn't matter who it is. It does not matter. They know nothing is changing either. They just want you to have a hope and a prayer. They just want to sound relevant. In other words, they're trying to get something from you that they can't get for themselves. Called hoodwinked, bamboozled, conning you under the guise of that they love you. But other than showing up on platform, you tell me what they're doing. Talking just silly, billy, googly, gobbly foolishness. And taking a heathen's books to try to justify, you know, Yahuwah. Verse 23. And your heaven is over your head shall be brass and the earth under your feet shall be iron. I think you know what that means. I mean, whatever you set your hand to do, you're going to fail at it in the end. You shall make rain and, you, and Yahuwah shall make the rain of your land powder and dust. Famine. From heaven it shall come down upon you until you be destroyed. This is all to us, Yasharel, for rebelling against Yahuwah. And Yahuwah shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. And you shall go out against them and you shall flee seven ways before them. You shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. In other words, just like Job said, all the nations of the earth and we're going to become their bondmen and their bondwomen. Their servants, their labor force. Your bodies shall fall to your bodies shall be meat unto the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray away. Shall will run them away. In other words, they're gonna keep attacking us. Yahuwah will smite you with the botch of Egypt. That's all the sores and tumors and scabs. The itch, talking about kidney disease, the tumors and things like that, cancer. With the itch. The scab, your hair falling out your head, alopecia, and more other things. I'm not talking about natural baldness. I'm talking about hair actually falling out. Whereof you cannot be healed from it. Yahuwah shall smite you with madness, bitterness, anger, hatred, and blindness and astonishment of heart, diabetes, glaucoma. And you shall grope at the noonday as a blind gropes in the darkness, and you shall not prosper in your ways, and you shall only be oppressed, and you shall be spoiled. In other words, you shall be taken advantage forever, and no man shall save you. All these, you know, uh, quick, get rich quick schemes, all these people, you know, who got all these answers for our problems, they're just rhetoricians. In other words, a rhetoric, a rhetoric is someone who's got all these words but never going to have any solutions. All their solutions are so far-fetched there's no way they can be implemented. A lot of people just come together and start working together. How is that going to happen when they're intentionally using devices to keep us separated? I'm talking about our enemies who control every resource we need to come up. So except your who will build a house as David said, they that labor to build it, they labor in vain. So all that talking they're doing, it's just talk. Let me calm myself down. I know I'm hollering. But he said, cry out, spare not, lift up your voice up. But I'm going to pull it in. All right? Verse 30. He said, you shall get a woman and another man shall take her from you. You shall build a house, but another man's going to live in there. You shall plant a garden. And by the way, 2025, 20, 2020, 20, 30, they're saying that uh, they're passing laws that you're not going to be able to farm anymore or have gardens. That's a whole story for a whole different time. Now you think who that's going to affect the most when we can't get healthy food to eat? Fake food. Food that made in laboratories. Who you think it's going to affect the most? Especially when y'all say he's judging us because we rejected him. I mean, he's not going to help us. The fight against them. Now we can come up, but we're gonna come up. We got to come up under Yahuwah, not under you know some 
you know, fancy pantsy who want to tell black people, you know, you need to just figure it out for yourself. Everybody else did. Yeah, everybody else did without a nation intentionally undermining them. Did not he say David, uh, did not Psalm 83, not David said that they will conspire against us? You know what conspiring means? They're going to intentionally sabotage you. Go ask them black farmers. They'll tell you what's happening. Google it up. What's going on with the black farmers all around the country? How they being sabotaged, giving, you know, bad feed to feed their animals. I think under the bottom, if the plant crops with inferior seed, and this is not anything new. It's still happening today, but it's been going on. See, a real watchman is going to bring these things out. It's going to sound like a lot. It's a lot. No, slow down and just listen. And then do your own research to make sure you're not, you know, I'm not conflating this. That's why we use precepts when we teach around here. But ignorance, you know, is bliss. But ignorance of, of something doesn't make you innocent of it. Ignorance of something doesn't mean that it's not going to affect you, brothers and sisters. So you can, again, you can run, run. You can, you can avoid this. You can, you can. You know, you can turn this video off. It ain't going to change anything. Turn it off and see if your life changed because you turned off me. See if your life changed because you unsubscribed to me. See if your life changes because you don't agree with me. See if your life changes. And if it does, come back and let me know. All right? Email me and say, you know, I turned you off and my life got better because I didn't believe anything you were saying according to what's in that book. I'll wait. It goes on to say, verse 31, your ox shall be slain before your eyes. In other words, they're going to intentionally sabotage your animal. They're going to intentionally sabotage everything you're trying to build. Double charge you, triple charge you, tax you, audit you. Whatever they got to do to, to destroy you. I'm talking about your enemies, by the way. Not your own brothers and sisters. You, there's some of us they're using to help them. But this is a judgment issue here. Goes on to say, your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people. And your eyes shall look and fill with a longing for them all day long. And there shall be no might in your hand. You're going to want to see our children do well, but nothing we can do to help them do well. So when we rebel against Yah, that's that, that proverb says, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Well, we'll never get wealth because of wickedness. There won't be no storing of anything except for those of us who come out. Let me be clear with that. This does not apply to all of us. One tenth of us getting out of this. Those of us who have turned back to Yahuwah. Those of us who are keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. Those of us who are worshiping and praising and acknowledging him morning, noon, and night. And we're not serving any other Elohim but him. But we do help one another. He said, your sons and daughters, again, verse 3, will give, be given to another people. And your eyes shall look, but there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. Including giving our children, or setting up laws that has our children locked up in these penitentiaries all over this country. Right now, did you know, brothers and sisters, that one out of three Israelite children if Yah tarries, will be will be, will spend some time in jail. One out of three right now. Look it up. One out of three. Now that's just us. That's not their number. That's Israel number. And you think Yah's word isn't true? You might want to think about this. Thirty-three. The fruit of your land and all your labors shall a nation which you know not shall eat it up. In other words, the people we can't relate to, people not even like us. Joel talks about that again in chapter 3, 3 through 4. And you shall be what? Oppressed and crushed. Everything you try to do is going to be destroyed in the long run. So that you shall be mad for the, for the sight of your eyes which you see. When you walk out your door and you see all this, 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 this dilapidated homes and, you know, and, and streets and with potholes and, you know, grown up weeds and just, just, you know, no city, you know, public uh, uh, service programs being executed properly, although you're paying taxes. When you see all those things going on, your children in a school system that will teach them to hate themselves. 
because they don't. Uh, there's nothing in the school system that identifies with them, but identifies with their enemies. And Malcolm said it better than anybody I can think of. He said, well, only a fool will let his enemies educate his children. And our children getting educated in a school system that by the time they get that seven, eight, ninth grade, they are no longer interested in anything that's being, you know, educated or, or communicated in those schools. We own out the educating of our children, not the heathens. And if we were following Yah's law, statutes, and commandments, he would show us a perfect way or a better way. But we won't even attempt to trust Yah. Unless we run in some damn heathen's church that they created looking for their heathen Messiah and their heathen books. And then wonder why nothing changes. The very definition of insanity, they say doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Isn't that what they say the definition of insanity is? I love my children. I love your hood, but you still feed them to the wolves to educate them. And then when the child comes home or you're getting called from the school talking about the child is, is, is not cooperating, you want to beat up on him, punish him, call him names, do whatever you want to do to him. And, it, and the poor thing hard him looking at you like... I don't know what to do. You wouldn't know what to do either. If you, what you were doing had nothing to relate to you or you couldn't relate with it. Like having a, a, a seventh grade education and somebody asking you to teach, you know, chemistry at Harvard. You would be looking at them like, what? My survival depends on my ability to do it, then I'm destined to fail. I'm sure that's the way our children feel in, in these, especially these public schools. But we haven't even taken the time to assess that or evaluate it. How did you feel when you were in there? How many of you graduated with honors and went on to a better life in their school system? I'll wait to hear that one. Every one of you did. I can assure you there are hundreds who did not. And if you truly love yourself and love your people, you would be concerned about those who didn't, not about yourself who did. But then again, you know how Israel is. All about me. 35. And Yahuwah shall smite you in your knees. That's arthritis. In your legs. And with sore breath that cannot be healed from sore of your foot to the top of your head. All the medication you won't take ain't going to fix it for you. They'll just keep you coming back for more. They'll just up the, how you say they're going to they gonna up the prescription for you. huh? They're going to up the, you know, the gram, the power of it. Y'all know how they do. We're going to make it a little bit stronger. That ought, to, that ought to fix it. You have to tear something else up. And you shall bring you in your king, which you shall have set over you unto a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there, shall you, there you shall serve their gods, their gods of wood, their Jesus, and their gods of stone, their Muhammad, Allah. Right here in the book. Right here in the book. Hidden in plain sight. 36. 37. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, a byword. It means you're going to be called different names. In other words, you're going to be called every name under the book. Coon. Boy. The N word. You don't need to hear me say it. The B word. We, we, now we've, we've embraced it as terms of endearment now. How sad. African-American, <laughs> Canaanites and Amorites is who we're naming ourselves after. And we're Israelites. A byword just means you're being called, you know, you're going to be called slanderous names, racist, racist names. They're going to, all, you know, the names that they, they, they put on us. What did, Henry, what did Hillary called us? Uh, super predators. Clinton, I'm talking about. That's a byword. The N-word, proverb. Don't trust them. That's a proverb. 
their animals. Let them destroy themselves. Just tell them the immigrants are their problem. <laughs> tell them to go to war with them. Hurry up. We're waiting. After all, y'all they say y'all going to try to kill us or we're going to turn y'all against them so that, you know, y'all don't do nothing to us. Lies, but you know how that is. Lies are easy to believe when you're ignorant. 38, when Hosea said, don't, he said, my people are destroyed for a lack of the knowledge. So it's Hosea 4 and 6. Just repeating, you know, when my sovereign creator have our forefathers right to keep me informed. You too. But I can only speak for me because I'm going to trust and follow him and I'm going to trust and follow his word. And you can too. But that ain't up to me. It's up to you. 39, you shall plant vineyards and dress them, but neither shall you drink the wine nor gather the, gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat it up. Just simply mean putting, no matter what you try to do to be successful, somewhere in the end, somebody's going to do something beyond your control to interfere with it. Except you serving Yahuwah. Remember, these are to those who reject him. This is not for those of us who obey him. To be clear, again. So you'll have olive trees through all, I'll try all your coasts, but you shall not anoint yourself with all. <laughs> Y'all say, I'm going to be everywhere for you, but you're going to go to the heathens for your anointing. You're going to go to their gods. You're going to go to their churches, their synagogues, their mass, their temples, their camps. Bitch, Nathaniel can help you because he a king. That purple and gold ain't no number but a rag they're wearing. That ain't representative of wealth. That's what they'll tell you. You know, purple and gold represents royalty. Yeah, but you broke, you know what I'm saying, as a morning egg at the Waffle House. Chill. But you put on some purple and gold. Verse 42. All your trees and the fruit of your land shall be to the locusts consumed. Again, just another way of saying, brothers, no matter, sister, no matter what you set your hand, you're going to fail without Yahuwah. 43. The stranger that, that is in your vicinity, the stranger that's in that's around you, shall get up above you very high, and you shall come down very low. In other words, we're going to be looking to the stranger for our provision, the stranger for our safety, the stranger for to, to, to meet our needs. So we're going to be like a servant to them. Master, what you need? I'll do it. All right. Sammy, I need you to get out here and pick up all the garbage and the trash around here. You love me, Sammy? Yes, master, I love you. Do what I say. You love me, Sammy? Yes, master, I love you. Do what I say. You love me, Tammy? Yes, master, I love you. All right. Do what I say. <laughs> Thank you, master. Master, you want some water? 44, and he shall lend to you, <laughs> and you won't lend to him, so you're going to run to him for money, because you won't have none. He shall be the head, and you're going to be the tail. In other words, it's supposed to be the opposite, but this is the judgment. 45, moreover, all these curses shall come upon you. You shall pursue and overtake you. So you be destroyed. Why? Because you have hearkened not to the voice of Yahuwah, to guard his commandments and his statutes, which he has commanded you. So all this, what I'm saying, all this stuff that's going around, they didn't tell us it had nothing to do with curses. They're just telling you it's all because of the color of your skin, all because you don't work hard enough, all because you don't have no pride in your community, all because you this and all because you that. 
and all of it is just a bunch of conflated nonsense. But if you believe the lie, then the lie is true to you, right? But it's still a lie. Our problem goes far beyond what we can touch and feel. Our problem have everything to do with relationship. We don't know who we are. We don't know who our Savior is. We don't know who our Redeemer is. We don't know who our Creator is. We don't know the love that He has for us. So therefore, we have rejected Him. Therefore, we have rejected His redeeming power, His salvation power. And it's got nothing to do with speaking in tongues and baptism. And how it is walking in knowledge and power and wisdom and understanding. Then you'll win. 47, because you serve now Yahuwah with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies, which Yahuwah has sinned against you in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. And we've proven that wearing rags for clothes and eat these days. And all and in in and in what and in one of all the things. And he shall put a yoke of iron around your neck until you be destroyed. Look what he said. Look at 48 again. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies, which your who shall sin against you. You shall be hungry, you're gonna be thirst, naked, and worn of everything. Tell me if you don't know no if you don't know someone that fit that description, if not yourself. Some of our brothers and sisters are in need of one so bad they can't even help, you know, your brother doing what I'm doing. Can't do anything. And I'm not judging you for that. I'm just saying. It's that bad. Now I wonder, you know, if if you have been serving your whole your whole life. If, if matter of fact, if you it would it be that bad? No, it wouldn't have been that bad. Matter of fact, we wouldn't have this story to tell. The story would be the opposite. We'd be blessed. You can read Deuteronomy twenty eight one through thirteen and understand what I'm saying. This is a consequence of rejecting your whole. But we don't see that because no one talks about it. The church ain't going to tell you about it. Believe that. The mosque's not going to tell you about it. The synagogue ain't going to tell you. The temple's definitely not going to tell you. The camp, please. I'm just not sure if them guys know how to count to 10 without confusing 9 with 6. Verse 49, you shall bring a nation, I, he will bring a nation against you from far. That's the immigrants from the end of the earth as swift as an eagle flies. A nation whose tongue you shall not understand. A nation of fierce continents which you shall not, rega which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. This is what Redacted is over there talking about. History is fulfilling itself in plain sight. And most of us have no idea because we don't know what's in this great book of knowledge. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to tell you what's in it. And hopefully inspire you to join me and learn from it. Some have. But far too many have not. Don't even want to hear this. But they're complaining about their situation though. Masa, I'm sick. Yeah, mentally, spiritually. Which reflects itself conditionally. Because we know not Yah. Or we reject him for a lesser Elohim. Verse 51. So this whole thing with the immigrants and stuff, brothers and sisters. These people have come from places, war-stricken places. And they are... They got they they've got a type of storkness about them that they're not going they don't get squimish when they see bodies all over the place. They don't get squimish. They they grew up seeing that war zones. So you ain't gonna bother them. So if you gonna so if you wanna fight them, go ahead. But I'm just letting you know they don't have no conscience like you do. Just saying, 
Because many of us, we got, we got all this huffing and puffing. But like the, what did you say? The, the story of the three little pigs. <laughs> puff and puff and blow your house down. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's easy to talk about what you're going to do when you don't have to do it. But when reality hits you and you got to do something about it, you're going to see if, if you're going to throw up and you see somebody decapitated. Body splitting in half, exploding all over the place. And see then if you're going to still have your resolve. You're going to still be cool, calm. I can do anything who, with Christ who strengthens me. We'll see. Well, you'll see. I'm going to be on the right side of the issue. Fifty-one, they shall eat the fruit of your cattle, the fruit of your land, and you until you be destroyed. Which is, again, it's poverty, a verse poverty. Not telling you you can't even grow your own food anymore. They gonna tell you what to eat. Which also shall not leave you with either grain or wine or all increase of your flocks, your sheep, until you have been destroyed. And he shall besiege you in all your gates, and until your high and fence walls come down. Wherein you trusted throughout all of your land, and he shall besiege you in and out of the gates throughout all your land which Yahuwah has given you. Again, the so called immigration issue in the major cities where most of us are populated into those ghettos, into those inner cities. And that's where they're sending them to. You know, a lot of our people, when these, these little clever devils like uh, DeSantis down there in Florida, and, um, What's the governor of uh, Texas? His name skips a mind. He's in a wheelchair. They were sending them people up. They come, come. I'm going to put them in buses. I'm going to send them to New York. See how they like it? No, they were all part of a strategy or a plot to push them into the inner cities under the guise that they were just trying to teach Biden a lesson. Brothers and sisters, they were confederate with Biden. They helped him out. But they knew we would be concerned. You would be concerned. Well, well why are y'all moving these people all over the country? So they played the game of the clever. They were playing chess while you were playing checkers. They were using their buses, planes, and everything else with taxpayer dollars claiming, oh, no, we're going to teach them a lesson. They want the immigrants and so we're going to send the immigrants to New York. And there you over there saying, boy, I'm glad I'm a Republican. See, that's why Donald Trump should be president. Because look. And the whole time, there was a fox in the hen house. Used taxpayer dollars to move them all over this doggone country under the guise that they were trying to teach the government a lesson. And in all truth, they were in cahoots with the government. Republican, Democrat, Independent. Three tits on the same cow. And there we are over there. Can I get some milk? That's a suckling. No. Maybe the appropriate word is sucker. I'm talking about if you fell for that. Fifty two, and you shall eat the fruit of your own body, the flesh of your sons and daughters, which your who has given to you, in a siege and in a straightness wherein your enemies shall distress you. Somebody's saying things gonna get so bad, brothers and sisters, you you may find yourself Dining on your own children. So if you think this is light, then I just want to not be polite and tell you it's not going to be nice. Either you're going to do something about it while you still can. Or you're going to see the manifestation of what I just read. Not because I said so. It's written in the book and y'all does not change. But this is not for everyone. This is for those who reject Yahuwah. Remember, these are those who prefer, you know, the Jesus and the Yahawashais and the Buddha and the Allah and, and the Krishna and whomever else is out there, including making themselves God. This is your future, so I hope you're ready for it. So the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his own brother and towards his own woman of his bosom. That's the uh, the infemination, the, uh, the infeminalization of our men. And you see that all. That's why they're painting their fingernails, painting their toenails, wearing dresses, carrying handbags, bonnets on their heads, wearing slippers out in public. 
skinny jeans revealing there of their butts. Shirt so tight, you know what I'm saying? You couldn't stick your finger down in it to get air. Just on and on and on. It's already happening. And they hate their own men, hate their own women. And that's pushing the homosexual agenda too, by the way, male or female. So that's what? They're going to be evil towards their children and they're not going to care about them. They're going to just leave them to the wolves. So that he will not give any of them, the, so he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his own children whom he shall eat. Now, that's not me saying this. Because he has nothing left in him in the siege. You know, we think going to get that bad. And in the straightness wherewith your enemy shall distress you in all of your gates. That means no matter where you are, in your house, out your house, in your community, not in your community. You can't run. You can go get on a ship and boat or something, go to, uh, to Africa, South Africa, all you want, listening to those idiots. They're going to be right over there waiting for you behind with a big old giant cook pot with your name on the menu. Your children too. It said, attending a delicate woman among you which, she would, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for her delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil towards her own man. And towards her own son, even her own daughter. Y'all don't see that going on around here? Now, this was written by Moses thousands and thousands of years ago. For all of you who want to talk about the white man wrote the Bible, well, he sure got this right. If you want to believe that lie. This is Yah's word and it's come to pass. We're living in it right now. Evidence is everywhere that this is true. And you know it. So stop, stop, stop this denial. Toward a young one that comes out of her, she'll be hateful towards her young one that comes out from between her legs and towards her own children which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for the one of things secretly in the siege and the straightness wherein your enemy shall distress you again in your gates. Her own baby is not going to be safe. Even the ones that are in her womb, they're not going to be safe. And it says why? Because her concern is going to be survival. And if something's going to get in my way, then I'm going to remove it. Or get assistance in removing it. Seventy million of them have been destroyed that way since about the 1980s. Seventy million. Double our population. 58, and if you will not guard the words of the Torah that is written in this book, that you may fear the glorious and fearful name of Yahuwah, these things will happen. Then Yahuwah will make your plagues wonderful. In other words, he's going to make them even worse. And the plagues of your children and great plagues and a long continent are continuance and sore sickness... And sore sickness and a long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the diseases that we read about that happened to the Egyptians, the Africans, when we were in their at first bondage. You know, the Africans were our one of the Africans and the Arabs enslaved us long before the Europeans did. Europeans didn't even know how to wipe their asses by when we were slaves and you know by the Africans and the Arabs. They were still living in the Caucasus Mountains up there. Walking on all fours. Barking. Didn't have a land nor a language. But they learned fast. Verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and should they show attach to us. Also, every sickness and every plague which is written in the cipher of this Torah that I'm reading from, Deuteronomy, if you can see it, the book of Deuteronomy, I'll see that, Deuteronomy. Until you be destroyed, and you shall be left few in number, whereas you were as many as the stars in the heavens for multitude, because you would not obey the voice of Yahuwah. And it shall come to pass that as Yahuwah rejoiced over you to do you good, 
That's what I. That's what Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven talks about. He said that Jeremiah twenty. I know the plans that I have for you. The plans to do good. A plan to prosper you. But all those things will not work if you're serving the other heathens' gods or these heathens and rejecting Yah's word, brothers and sisters. And that's what he means. That Yah said, I had a plan for you, but you don't want my way. You want the ways of the heathens. You learn their ways. You know, their day of worshiping the dead is coming up this Monday called Memorial Day. Most of our people went right over there with them doing it. Not because, you know, there's any meaningful event because that's what they were told to do. If you've got loved ones, you know, buried in wherever, you can go see them anytime. Why are you letting them tell you what day to go? But you don't follow them. You're not a follower, but you're going to do it on the day they tell you to do it. But you're not a follower. Nobody can tell you what to do, right? You're your own person, but you're going to do it on the day they say. Like you do with all the other holidays. That's called confusion of the mind. You're a walking contradiction. You're independent, codependent. Make that make sense. Verse 63, and it shall come to pass that Yahuwah rejoice to do, do good for you and multiply you so Yahuwah will rejoice over to destroy you. So y'all said the same joy and pleasure I would have had to bless you. Now I'm going to have that same joy and pleasure destroying you. I'm talking about those of, of Israel who reject him. And just saying it with your word that you love him is not enough. And it should come to pass that Yahuwah rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you so Yahuwah will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing. And you shall be plucked from the, off the land wherever you go to possess it. And Yahuwah shall scatter you among all the people from one end of the earth until the other. And there you shall serve their gods, including their, all of their religious gods, their saviors, their redeemers, Yahweh Shai, all of them. And they get mad at us when we tell them, you know, about we don't serve their heathen gods. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, this, read, brother, have, are you reading this book? Well, we do so, you who are true Jesus. <laughs> okay, man, go ahead on. Just go, go away from me. Verse 64, Yahuwah shall scatter you among all people from one end of the earth to the other, and there you shall serve their gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, even the ones of wood and the ones of stone. Again, Islam and Christianity, two of the number one and number two religions on this earth. Both of those, Christianity, two billion plus Islam, 1.8 billion. That's half of the world's population fall under one of those two religions. The one, the black stone one, Mecca, and then the one of wood, the Vatican. And that's all of those churches who fall under their umbrellas, those religions that fall up under their umbrellas. Catholic, Protestant, non-denominational, etc. Now you know. I guess the question is what you're going to do about it. What you're going to do with this knowledge. And you who, verse 60, 65, and among these nations you shall find no peace. Neither shall the soul of your foot have any rest. For Yahuwah shall give you a fearful heart and failing eyes and misery, sorrow of mind. And your life shall be hanging doubt before you and you shall fear day and night. So instead of not Psalms 91, being your your, your 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 statement of strength, thou shalt not by, be fear of the you know, terrors of night, or the arrows by day. He said, "No, you're going to be afraid afraid night and day. Every little sound going to have you looking. What's that? Every demon will have a, his way in your space. The ones you see and the ones you can't see. That's what it's talking about." Verse 66, and you'll let, verse 67, and in the morning you shall say, oh, I wish it was in the evening. In the evening you will say, oh, I wish it was in the morning. For the fear of your heart, wherein you shall fear. For the sight of your eyes, which you shall see. 
That's the thing that's coming real soon. They about to get destroyed. This is almost over, brother. I'm talking about this whole earth, not just here in America, everywhere. Ain't no gonna be no place to run. The only state they're gonna be is in Yahuwah. And Yahuwah shall bring you into Egypt again, Africa again with ships. That's these idiots talking about going back to Africa in their second exodus. By way where have I spoken to you, you shall see it no more again. And you shall be sold to your enemies for buying men and buying women, and nobody gonna give a damn about it. Not even your own people. Now there you have it. I've taught it again. At the end of the day, my brothers and sisters, the evidence of Yah's judgment is everywhere. Well, I'm waiting to see what Yah gonna do. Really? You haven't noticed he's not happy? You haven't noticed that he's not going to accept his chosen, the apple of his eye, Yasharel, rebelling against him? Because we want a king. We want to be like the heathens. You haven't noticed he's not pleased with it? But hopefully now you are going to take notice. Hopefully I've done my job to give you something to compare and contrast, to measure. But more important than any of that, I hope I've persuaded you that there is a way out of this mess. And that way is turning back to the sovereign Yahuwah of Yasharel. Or perish. Your decision. But like Joshua said in, in the book of Joshua, chapter 24 and 15, he said, look, y'all want to do the ways of the heathen? Y'all forgotten the things of the past? Y'all forgotten what happened to us when we turned our backs against Yahuwah? In the first exodus, like the, when, we, when we were in prison or enslaved and all the things that happened to us by those heathens, the Canaanite ones, the Arab ones, the European ones, he said, fine, if y'all want to go back that way, go that way. He said, but as far as me and my house, mm -mm. he said, we serving Yahuwah. That's good advice. I take that advice. I hope you will too. That being said, brothers and sisters, you know, that's it. All I got for you today. The answer is in the book. It's in our history book. No, we ain't fighting with no immigrants. Only with the ignorant will go over there. And again, it's our, our life. Again, I'm going to leave that in the description. But brothers and sisters, that's not our fight. That's a fight that they're, that, that's a fight they're creating for us. But that's not our fight. And if you take that bait, <laughs> that hook going to snatch you up. And they're going to sit right there and blame everything on y'all. Well, they ain't got nothing to do with us. That's them fighting each other. That's, that's that ain't. No, 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 no. Don't hold up. Y'all can't blame us for it. Yeah, right. What does the scripture say? They do evil and hold themselves not accountable. Because they're clever. They're confederate. Psalms 83 again to remind you. Why? Because they want to eliminate the children of Yahuwah. You, me, Israel. So, again, to be is up to us. I'm here. I'm going to fight. I hope you'll help me. Hallelujah. That's it. I want to thank Sister Billups. I want to thank Sister uh, Wright. I want to say thank Sister Coke, uh, Sister Emily, Sister Jackson, Sister Davis. Again, you know, for all of you guys, the ones who, Brother uh, Jonathan, you know, for your, for your gifts, I appreciate it. Again, it, it allows me to stay focused. I don't have to be worried about these other things. Okay? Sister Maria. So thank you, brothers and sisters. You know, I love you. I appreciate you. And all of you others out there, let's come together. Let's figure this out. We can figure it out. Our strength is in Yahuwah. Turn back to our sovereign creator and we can win. Hope you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know I was. That's why I'm here. And that's why I'm doing something about it. Hallelujah. All right. Yahuwah, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Don't forget to support your brother, support the channel. And until next time, may y'all watch over you, protect you, and you turn back to him and him only. Shalom, Yasharel.